did it. We hit a thousand subscribers. We actually hit a thousand subscribers a little while ago. Actually, right now we are at, I think, 1100. Because of that, we're gonna make ramen today. And we're both really, really excited about it. It's gonna be a long process. Uh, we're filming this actually over the course of two days because it, there's a lot of steps involved, but we're really, really excited to do it. We're really excited to put this episode out. We're really excited that we hit a thousand subscribers. Yes, thank you. That's so cool. Thank you to all thousand of you that are out there, 1100 of you now. A lot of you probably are pretty new to the channel. We've had quite a few people sign up in the last couple of episodes. If you've never seen the full measure, we make a dish in two different ways. The first way we make it is very easy and simple and we try to make it a little bit better with not too much effort and we call that the half measure. And then the second way we make it is we go all out. We put in a bunch of time and a bunch of effort to make the dish as good as we can at home and we call that the full measure. Uh, and then at the end of the show, we let you know whether going the full measure was worth it or not. Strap in, because today's gonna be a long one. We have a lot of stuff to make, but... Uh, lots of this. Lots of that. This. <laughs> yeah. I also just love um, a big bowl of warm food, so ramen is like the epitome of uh, my, my food love. It's just super, super comforting, yeah. Uh, do you like... Pork, chicken, mushroom. Um, I love pork, and pork, I yeah. love mushroom. Well, you're in luck because there's two kinds of pork going in the full measure ramen. We also polled a bunch of people on Facebook and Instagram about what what they like to do to jazz up their instant ramen. For the for the half measure today, we're making you know the cheap packaged store bought ramen, and we're going to show you a couple ways that we like to jazz it up. A couple ways that people suggested that we try out. And the full measure, we are making absolutely every ounce of it from scratch. The broth, completely from scratch. The noodles, completely from scratch. We're gonna cook a pork shoulder and pork belly. We're gonna soft boil yeah, eggs. That's what I like. Yeah, it's gonna be a process. So this video might be a little bit longer, but uh, hopefully you enjoy watching it. And I don't wanna waste any more of your time before we get to cooking ramen. So let's make some half measure ramen. Let's go. These are some really quick and easy add-ins to ramen. We asked a bunch of folks on Facebook and added some of their suggestions as well. This is not prescriptive. You can add a seemingly infinite amount of stuff to your bowl. Any combination of these would be great. Two to three items per bowl is a good starting point. Two of these items are things we've made on the show, the hot sauce and the chili oil. Make sure you check out those episodes as well. Instant ramen comes in so many flavors, and it's a pretty standardized product. Each bowl is typically made up of two basic elements. First, the noodles, which are deep fried. This allows the noodles to cook in just three minutes. This technique was created by Momofugu Ando, an inventor and the founder of Nishin, the company that makes top ramen and cup noodles to this day. The second element is a flavor powder. It's essentially a broth, like we'll make later in the episode, cooked down to a very concentrated state and then dehydrated to make this powder. It's ingenious and it makes great soup. Some kits will also come with flavor oils to add in and single serving silverware. Definitely going to surprise Alexandria with this later. She loves tiny silverware. Lastly, sometimes there's freeze dried veggies. I always throw these out or just add my own fresh veggies. These never taste that great to me. The chicken I'm using is just from the grocery store, the ready-made rotisserie chickens, and I'm just shredding it a bit here. The mushrooms for our ramen are shiitake. Saute them in a pan with about one tablespoon of olive oil. Toss them to coat. They'll brown a bit and lose most of their moisture. Add salt and pepper to taste. For the eggs, bring a pot of water to a boil. Turn the heat down to a simmer and add your eggs gently and let them sit in the water for about six minutes. Remove them and drop them into some ice water to stop the cooking. These are perfect soft boiled eggs every time. One method that's very simple if you're making a few bowls at a time is to use an electric kettle. This allows you to skip putting a bunch of bowls in and out of a microwave. I'm just using the kettle to save time. I'm adding the corresponding flavor packet to each bowl and pouring the boiling water over each. Let these sit for three minutes and they're done. Try to keep the lid closed if you can. In the background, I'm trying to cook one with the egg in the bowl while microwaving. It didn't turn out great, but there are some videos that swear it can be done. A six minute egg is foolproof, so just go with that. I'm putting these into our own bowls just to make it look a little nicer. Totally unnecessary. To the chicken and mushroom flavor, I'm adding shredded rotisserie chicken, along with some chopped green onions. Actually, all of them get green onions. This helps make it taste a little more fresh. I'll add the shiitake mushrooms to the beef flavored bowl. This next one was a suggestion from a social media post. One tablespoon of crunchy peanut butter. We'll add that to the pork rib bowl. This needs a good mix to incorporate, but I'm really excited to try it. The last one I'm making is a leap of faith. Roy Choi has responded to the ramen question several times saying that he likes a slice of American cheese on his bowl of ramen. Who knows, but we're trying it. I unequivocally trust Roy Choi. This one also has a six minute egg. The egg actually would be a great addition to any of these bowls. These are just a few of the infinite ways you can dress up ramen. All of these could get a dash of hot sauce or some chili oil. One of the best parts about this quick lunch or dinner is that you can continually try new things. I just put peanut butter in a bowl of soup. There are no rules. Let's give these a try. Here we are. 
Instant ramen. These are the two wild cards. <laughs> this one has a slice of cheese on top. It looks like it does. Which it looks like it has a slice of cheese. And then this is peanut butter. The best surprise of all. What? No way. Oh my God. Did this come with it? it uh, yeah, some of these sometimes have like a little utensil. One last thing to add is just some hot sauce that can go on the top. This is our hot sauce that we made on the show. Chili oil that we've made on the show, which I think would be really good on this one here. All of them get some nori. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think we should just dive in. <laughs> it's your little spoon. It's a fork. Or a fork, yeah. Oh, uh, the mushrooms are, I mean, it's fantastic. Yeah. And really like instant ramen is already damn good on its own. So anything you can do to like make it a little bit better is obviously gonna help. Adding the grocery store rotisserie chicken. Instead of cooking your chicken, you just add it from the grocery store. So when do you put the chicken in? You just put it on at the end when you're done. If you have a grocery store chicken warm, you just put it on top. If not, you just warm it up in your, in your oven for like 20 minutes and then you're good to go. Chicken, great. Mm -hmm. Mushroom, great. Try this, this cheese one. Okay. Uh, Roy Choi swears by it. A little bit of cheese. This also has an egg in it. So like just the broth itself is going to be creamier. That's really, <laughs> that's oh. really, really good. <laughs> Roy knows what's up. <laughs> Roy knows what's up. Oh. I've never tasted ramen that that <laughs> tasted like that before. Um, I'm gonna take another bite of that. Yeah, that I was really, really good. <laughs> I was like, this does not look right. I'm not into it. That is delicious. Approved. Is that just like an at home thing? I'm sure there's some restaurants where you could order that. I'm not aware of any, but it's because we live in the Midwest and not on the coast, but. Would you just be like, can I put some? I brought my own, cheese. I brought my I own got, cheese from home. I got a slice. <laughs> I'm super interested in this one. So this is? It's peanut butter. Peanut butter? In a, in a pork rib flavor. I think this one might be really good with the chili oil. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That one's really good. Okay. Yeah. Um, so gonna... the ones I was really unsure about are kind of like the best ones. Yeah. Like if you're gonna have something fun, why yeah. not like make it cool? That peanut butter is so good, especially with the chili oil, holy cow. Here's here's my verdict on it. If you're just making it at home and you wanna get weird with it. Get real weird. That's the way to go. And it's not weird, it's delicious. It's so good. Yeah, the peanut butter, the cheese was really good. I think I like the peanut butter the best. I really like that one. The cheese one is really good. I mean, I guess you're right, like Thai food and. Yeah, it's like a Thai, it, it has a Thai flavor to it. Dang. Yeah, solid. Would not have guessed no. either. No, but wow. I think that leaves the big challenge next, the full measure ramen. <sighs> Buckle in, it's gonna be a ride. We are making a lot of stuff from scratch, so. But again, to celebrate a thousand subscribers, so thank you. With that said, let's make some full measure ramen. Yeah. <laughs> there are many recipes for ramen. There's also a lot of tradition involved, and I'm no chef, so I wanna turn to someone I fully trust with ramen. Obviously, David Chang comes to mind. This is his cookbook, one of my favorites. We will be going through a lot of steps in this video, and if you need more information, I highly recommend this book. Today, we're making the ramen served at Momofuku, their signature bowl. I've had a lot of ramen, but this was the first proper bowl I ever had, and I thought it would be a great way to celebrate this milestone in our show. Let's get started. These are all the ingredients that make up a bowl of ramen served at Chang's Noodle Bar, Momofuku in New York. And these are the items we will be making today. Actually, it'll take two days in real time. Normally, this show would dedicate an entire episode to each one of these individual components, but we are celebrating today, so I wanted to put in the work. Thank you again for helping us reach 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. We truly appreciate it. Why don't we get started on the broth? This is everything you'll need to make your ramen broth. Some of these items might seem like they're a little hard to find, but they're actually pretty simple. Ordering online might help as well. The tare is also something we will be making. This is used to season the broth. It can be swapped for kosher salt or a mixture of soy and mirin. In a large pot, bring six quarts of water to a simmer, around 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Add your kombu and let this soak for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, remove the kombu and discard. This is a really good time to preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll need it later. Next, bring the water to a full boil and add your dried shiitake 
shiitakes that have been rinsed. Turn the heat back down to a bare simmer and let the mushrooms soak for 30 minutes. They will give a lot of color and fragrance to the broth. After the mushrooms are out, it's time to add your chicken, four pounds worth. I like to use any backs that I've saved from whole chickens and supplement with thighs and wings. Add these to the simmering water and continue a bare simmer for one hour. You'll see some foam and other stuff rising to the top. Skim this off about every 10 to 15 minutes. You may also have to add a little water from time to time to make sure the chicken stays completely submerged. While the chicken is in the pot, we will also be roasting five pounds of pork bones. These are very inexpensive and you can find them at any butcher shop. They'll have some meat left on them and that's good, you want that. Place them on a sheet pan and into a 400 degree oven for one hour. Flip them over at the halfway point. After your chicken has been in the pot for one hour, you'll be able to see that the meat is falling from the bone. That's when it's time to pull it out. The chicken can be seasoned and served on its own. It will not be in the finished bowl of ramen. Unless you put it in there, then it will be in the finished bowl of ramen. Next, it's time for the pork portion of this cook. The bones should be done by the time the chicken comes out. Add these to the broth. You'll also add one pound of very smoky bacon. Momofuku uses bacon from Benton's in Kentucky, so I use bacon from Benton's in Kentucky. I'll link them in the description. This bacon is beyond smoky and it works really well in this broth. The bacon goes into the pot for 45 minutes and then it's time when the hot tub is over, leaving the lonely bones to simmer for six to seven hours. Continue your skimming and adding water when needed. Stop adding water at hour five. You want it to reduce a bit by this point. Let's let the broth simmer for a while while we work on a few other elements. There are two cuts of pork in our bowl of ramen, three pounds of pork shoulder and a pound and a half of pork belly. These will both get a rub with a mixture of one quarter cup kosher salt and one quarter cup sugar. Mix this together and rub all over both cuts of meat. If your pork belly still has skin, you'll want to remove it before adding the salt and sugar. Place these in a small tray or a container and cover with plastic. These will be in the refrigerator for the rest of the day. They can be left in there for up to 24 hours. We will cook both cuts of meat the next day. Another task we can knock out is our tare. Tare is a catch-all term for a sauce made generally from sake, mirin, and soy sauce. The one I keep on hand is different from the one in the cookbook. I use one cup of soy sauce, one cup of apple cider vinegar, a quarter cup of sherry vinegar, a two inch knob of ginger, three cloves of garlic, two tablespoons of brown sugar, a teaspoon of black peppercorns, and six green onions. Everything can be rough chopped and thrown into the pan. Bring this all to a boil and then back down to a simmer for about 45 minutes. It will thicken slightly. When you're done, strain everything. You can store it in a hot sauce bottle or a leftover soy sauce bottle, and it can be used to season pretty much anything, including our broth. Speaking of, during the last 45 minutes of your simmering time, add one bunch of scallions, one onion, and two carrots, both roughly chopped. When the time has finally come for your broth to be done, remove all of the solids and discard. Pass the liquid through a fine mesh sieve lined with a few layers of cheesecloth. I do this twice just to make the broth as clean as possible. You'll notice we haven't added any salt to this point. That's where the tare comes in. I can't tell you how much to add because it's always different. The bacon adds some saltiness, but you have to just try it and keep adding. I usually add some tare, some soy sauce, and a little kosher salt. They all affect the flavor in their own way. In the book, it says the broth should taste like it's on the verge of being too salty. This broth can be stored in containers for tomorrow's ramen, it will keep in the fridge for about a week, or you can freeze it for up to a year. There's no way you won't use it quicker than that, I promise. This amount will make approximately 10 bowls. And that's it. The broth is complete. That's the end of day one. Good morning! Day two starts with pork belly. Get your oven preheated to 450 degrees Fahrenheit and drain off all the liquids that have accumulated. This is going in with the fat side up for one hour, baste it halfway through. Then drop the temp to 250 degrees and cook for another hour. You'll see that I changed the pan I was roasting in. The one I used was causing it to burn. Use a small dish like this one. Let it cool completely and then wrap it in plastic wrap. Back in the fridge it goes while we finish everything else. For the pork shoulder, drain off the liquid or use a different pan. A small one like this works best. The pork shoulder goes in at 225 degrees Fahrenheit for six hours. Baste this with the juices accumulating in the pan every hour until it's complete. This has five more hours left, so let's make some noodles. The noodles for ramen are pretty straightforward, only four ingredients. However, you'll surely notice that some of these ingredients sound more like they're part of a chemistry set. That's because they kind of aren't. Ramen noodles are alkali noodles. That's what gives them their springy texture. Some of these unfamiliar ingredients help adjust the pH of the noodles themselves. These are common food additives and they can be found online. The sodium carbonate can actually be made with baking soda. The exact same thing we did in our pretzel episode. When handling these salts, a mask and gloves are a good idea as they are strong enough to cause irritation to your skin and lungs. Add 800 grams of bread flour, 300 grams of room temperature water, 7.2 grams of sodium carbonate, and 0.8 grams of potassium carbonate to the bowl of a stand mixer and mix together. This will knead for about 10 minutes total. You may have to add a little water until it forms a soft dough. Do this one tablespoon at a time. You'll see I keep my hand on the off button here because this is quite a large batch of dough for a home machine. It kicked my bowl out a few 
wait time, so I bailed and finished kneading by hand. The salts had already dissolved into the dough and water, and the risk for irritation had diminished. I only had about four minutes to go, and I just finished by hand. Once you're done kneading, the dough will feel very springy. Wrap this in plastic and let it rest in the fridge for 30 minutes. If you've seen our pasta episode, you know I don't own a pasta cutter. Well, I didn't until now. You need a spaghetti cutter to make these properly. From here, it's almost exactly like the pasta episode. Cut a small piece of dough to work on, wrap the ball back up and leave it in the fridge when you're rolling the pasta. Coat this with a little flour, roll it flat with the rolling pin, and put it through your pasta roller to get it to a pretty thin setting. The length of the sheet will determine the length of the noodles. Switch to the cutting attachment and pass the sheet through. Toss the noodles immediately with a generous amount of flour to prevent them from sticking together. Flatten it out, roll it thin, cut it, toss with flour. Repeat this until you've finished all of the dough. Once you're done cutting, divide the noodles into 6 ounce portions and wrap as individual packages. Each one is a portion for a bowl of ramen. These will hold in the fridge for 24 hours or you can freeze them in the last a few months. Good luck not eating all of these in one week. And just like that, our noodles are done. Let's move on to the slow poached eggs next. Slow poached eggs are a little different than soft boiled eggs. They crack open like a raw egg, but everything has been gently cooked and gives you more runny yolk than a soft boiled egg. You accomplish this by keeping the eggs elevated off the bottom of the pot and cooking at a low temp for a long time. I'm using the strainer which keeps the eggs right in the middle of the water. Use whatever you have around. A steamer basket works well too. You want your water at a constant 140 to 145 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature is very important, so you'll want to monitor it with a thermometer. Let these poach at 140 degrees for 45 minutes and then remove and place in an ice bath. Serve immediately or hold in the fridge for 24 hours. To serve, crack it open and drain off any of the watery liquid left and gently drop it into the soup. Not much left on our list, so let's finish up that pork shoulder. After six hours is up, remove and baste one last time. Let the pork rest for 30 minutes before you cut into it. This will help the meat stay as juicy as possible. After the rest period, you'll see that the meat needs no help falling apart, but shred the pork into long strands, pretty much the same way you would see pulled pork at a barbecue spot. You can add this directly to your ramen and then store the leftovers in the fridge, covered and sealed. To reheat later, pop it into a 250 degree oven for a few minutes. The pork shoulder is done. All that's left are these three items which go on top of the ramen itself. We aren't making these per se, but let's prep them for the bowl. The nori can be cut into small sheets. You'll want about two per bowl. The peas need to be opened. You can put any seasonal vegetable you'd like in ramen, but peas are great this time of year and I'm using these, uncooked, right in the bowl. Corn is another great option if peas aren't in season. Lastly, we have the naruto. Typically, these are the little white and pink spiral things you see in ramen. I couldn't find that specific kind, but these are essentially the same thing. It's a steamed fish cake. It's a fun thing to add and it's totally optional. These particular ones taste just like imitation crab and it adds a really cool texture. We'll slice these very thin and serve about two to three per bowl. We've got a few items in the fridge from yesterday that we need to get out and prep. The pork belly was chilled so we could make clean cuts in the meat. Cut half inch thick pieces of the belly and warm them in a pan over medium heat. Warm until the pork is soft and jiggly. We also need some of the stock we finished yesterday. You'll notice that it has turned into a jelly texture. This is a good sign that there's a lot of flavor in the stock. Warm this in a small pot to prepare it for the bowl. After it's warm, this is a really good time to make any last minute seasoning adjustments. This is a normal soup bowl. This will not do. A ramen bowl is needed. It is much larger and it saves you from having to eat this out of a giant mixing bowl, which you could also do. Props to you if you do. You may also want one of these little soup spoons, both the bowl and the spoon I got on Amazon. And here we are ready to assemble. I believe it's been 22 hours of cooking to get me to this point, and I'm real excited to put everything together. We need a pot of boiling salted water for our noodles and all of our ingredients at the ready. If you're doing this for a large crowd, you may want a set of hands to help you. There's a lot of moving parts here. Drop the noodles into the boiling water for five minutes. You'll know they're ready when they are tender, but still a little toothsome. Pull them from the water and drain them completely. Place the noodles into the bowl and cover completely with the warmed broth. You can pull the noodles up and fold them over to help untangle them a bit. Next, add a half a cup of pork shoulder, two slices of pork belly, about a quarter cup of the peas, the slow poached egg, very carefully, two to three pieces of the fish cake, and two sheets of nori tucked into the bowl. How about some pocket scallions to top everything off? And that's it, we are finished. This was a mountain of work, but I had an absolute blast making it. The noodles could definitely be out of the box and it would be a lot easier, but this show is called The Full Measure, and I wanted to go all out because I wanted to say thank you to our first 1,000 subscribers. That's a huge milestone for a very young channel. If you're an insane person and you wish to follow this video along, please understand you can make this ramen however you want. I'll leave you with this quote from David Chang's cookbook. Everyone says ramen is rigid, that it has to be one exact thing. It isn't, and it doesn't. The most important thing is that you make it delicious, not that you make it exact. Make it taste good. I think this really gets to the heart of what this show is about. Food is supposed to be delicious. How do you make delicious food? That's it. Sometimes it does need to be complicated, but sometimes it just needs to be simple. 
The important thing is just that it tastes good. Let's give this bowl a taste and see how it stacks up. Holy! You did it! You made the ramen! <laughs> All by myself. Here we are. I was trying to do the math, and I think this is somewhere around 22 hours of cooking in that bowl. I enjoyed every minute of it. That is not a complaint. I also want to say thank you again for helping us reach a thousand subscribers. That's the reason we're making this today. So thank you for being part of our little growing community. Uh, just get like some noodles and a couple of the little like, pieces of pork. Oh, <laughs> um, oh man. This slow poached egg, which I'm sure a lot of people are gonna be like, that was a lot of work for an egg, but I want to show you why. Give eggs a chance. That's why. Ooh. I mean, that tastes like, I'm not gonna say it tastes exactly like Momofuku in, in New York, but, but that is like as good a bowl of ramen as I've had. You made this. And I made it. Um, Those noodles, the meats and stuff and. This whole time I've been cooking, I've been trying to think like, what am I gonna say? What am I gonna talk about with this? And I had so many things to say and now I'm eating it and it's just like, I, I can't even formulate a thought. There's a lot of times that I've been really proud of what I've cooked. I have a huge amount of pride for making that bowl of food. You should be proud. And when you taste it, it's you can just taste the hours. Like you can't make a bowl of food like that in one night, like it's just not possible. Um, and I'm extremely proud of that bowl of noodles and I'm extremely proud of this channel. So it kind of goes hand in hand that those two things would coincide. I think a huge lesson to take away from this bowl and maybe apply to the half measure, take any one of those ingredients. Like maybe you just do a pork shoulder. If you put a pork shoulder that you roasted at home by yourself all day in a bowl of instant ramen, it's going to be delicious. Yeah. Maybe you just do a slow poached egg. That's 45 minutes. You could do that on a weeknight. Maybe you do the pork belly. Maybe you just put some fresh peas. Maybe you get the nori and put it in there. The most important thing is, is any of these one elements could easily be put into a half measure bowl of ramen, or you could do them all together. I also think this is clearly like a once a year. <laughs> like you, don't, you don't do this very often. This style of food is very clearly intended to be made in a commercial kitchen where you have ovens on all day, you have stovetops burning all day, and you have people that can do this in shifts. Doing this all by yourself is an undertaking, to say the least. Do I think you shouldn't do it? No. If you like being in the kitchen, absolutely. I think I was prepared to say, like, don't make this. This is a lot of time and a lot of effort. But just seeing the in ingredients that you brought home, yeah. all of the stuff, I was like, I feel like this isn't worth it. I was very prepared to say that this would be outweighed by the half measure. I've had really good bowls of ramen before. I've had this bowl of ramen from Momofuku in New York, and I knew there's no way that it would feel like it was worth all that time and effort. But now that I have it and I'm tasting it, I think it was worth it. This is a beautiful bowl of food. I don't want to over romanticize a bowl of, you know, I, I, these are typically viewed as like quick bites and lunch and late night drunk snacks. Um, but this, it's a great bowl of food. Let's see where it ranks on our chart of worth it -ness. This, of course, is our chart of worth it -ness, where we measure how much effort goes into a dish versus how much payoff you get back. The half measure ramen was really good. The peanut butter and the cheese on top really surprised me. They were very, very tasty. Of course, the full measure ramen was absolutely delicious, but it did take two days to make, and it was a lot of work. This type of dish is most easily prepared in commercial kitchens, and it's going to be a lot of work for one single person at home. But I definitely think you should give it a try. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for helping us get to a thousand subscribers. We started two months ago with like 200 subscribers. I was sure when we were like, hey, when we reach to a thousand subscribers, it would be months and months down the road, but like we did it in two months and that's because of you. So thank you so much for watching our videos. Thank you for tuning in with us every week. We know there's a lot of weird stuff going on in the world right now. There's a lot of stress and strife. Hopefully we can help bring just like a minute of a break for you so you can get back out there and keep fighting the good fight. I think it's time to set another goal. I think maybe, what do you think about 5,000? 5, 5,000? Let's set it at 5,000. I don't know what the food is gonna be yet because I kind of want you guys to help us decide. So leave a comment below of what we should make to celebrate 5,000 subscribers. We will we'll read all those comments and take a look. Also leave a comment below if you have any food that you'd like to see us cook or let us know what you put in your ramen because this is, ramen has like an infinite amount of variations. So we would love to hear how you make it. If you happen to make any of the food from this episode or from any of our previous episodes, 
please tag us. We're on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. We've got a Patreon as well. Uh, all of our information can be also found on our website, fullmeasureshow.com. I cannot say thank you enough for all of the folks that have supported us early on. We're gonna continue to do this and someday maybe we can look back and say like, how special were those first thousand people that subscribed to us? So thank you so much. Thank you. I am, I'm very tired. Thank you.